Hello everybody. Welcome to Art Force Iowa's Artful Connection series. On Tuesday, uh, on Tuesdays, I'll be doing whatever I can concoct that I think is fun and stress relieving and artful. And today we're making puppets. I have been practicing for a week and <laughs> I'm not a master puppet maker or puppeteer. Uh, the puppeteer is the one who operates the puppet. But I did a little bit of research and a puppet is anything that a person manipulates. So we're gonna have fun with that idea. I have materials right over here. Um, paper, any paper. I don't have a lot of paper, so I'm going to be using newspaper today. Uh, markers, scissors, and then tape or glue. That's all you need. Hi Ron, glad you're here. And then I put some optional items on there. <laughs> Not everybody has the luxury of googly eyes. Um, you could also use yarn, you could use corks, you could use fabric, you could use spatulas, you could use spoons, you could, you're not limited to anything. Cause like if you look at something around you, you could just be like, oh, how could this be a puppet? Look, let's see, what would he sound like? He'd probably be like, well, I'm not really sure how I feel about that. So this might get some eyes. This is something that I want to keep though. It's not going to be a puppet forever. So I would just use tape on this object, uh, not glue. But if you're working with paper or fabric, go ahead and use glue. Some people might sew. That is not where I'm going today. <laughs> I'm going to stay uh, real safe with nothing sharp. Some scissors, that's about it. So I'll let you gather your materials and I'm excited to welcome everyone here. Happy Tuesday. So I like to, or I've learned that three things is the right number for clearing the air and centering yourself. So let's do that. Hi, Emma, glad you're here. So I really miss the Art Force Iowa ritual, the way that we check in at workshop, we talk about our highs and our lows for the day. And I would like you to think about maybe what your high and your low is for today. And we're not gonna dwell on either one of those things, we're just gonna get present. So my high for today is for sure this workshop. I think puppets are very cute and stuff that's cute is something that I gravitate towards. So I think that's going to be fun. Also, <laughs> um, I'm pretty excited about Louie being here. <laughs> um, and I'm looking forward to lunch today because I get to have leftover spaghetti. Just moving through, we got this. And then my low is definitely not Louie's butt. My low is the stress I feel our community is under. I think it's, everyone's dealing with it differently and people are not having empathy 
for the way their neighbor or their loved one is acting because it's so life and death. It's so important to do the right thing. So this guy's gonna get on my lap. Come on, buddy. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna get comfortable here. <laughs> okay. Guess who the boss of the house is? Not me. So we're getting materials for puppets right now and we're also tolerating my cat. And we're thinking about our highs and lows just to get present and grounded where we are. And we're going to make some really cute puppets. So the first thing that I would like to do is welcome everyone here. I see there's someone, there's Brandy, there's Lisa. Yay, there's Ron. Oh, and someone's feeling some peace. That's wonderful to hear, Ron. And feelings are difficult. Or they're not difficult, but they're just... <laughs> I had My heart was racing this morning when I got a text, right? And I was just like, why, why is my body reacting this way? And these are just uncommon times. And just because I react one way to one thing doesn't mean even that anyone in my house is going to react the same way. So trying to be generous with each other and generous with ourselves and our feelings. Yeah. So on that note, I'd like to do some welcoming. Oh my gosh, I welcome the spring flowers. I love those brightly colored harbingers of spring, those guys that show up first, the tulips and the daffodils and the hyacinths all the bulby guys who are hardy through the winter time. Thanks for sharing that. So at Art Force Iowa, now and always, we welcome you. We welcome people of all genders. We welcome people of all ages. We welcome people who can communicate in more than one language. We welcome people who are immigrants. We really welcome people who are immigrants because we are all descended from immigrants. We welcome people who are survivors, all of us today. We welcome people who like to talk and people who don't. We welcome people from all over the world. We welcome people with loved ones who are locked up or far away. We welcome people who have struggles with their parents or guardians or caregivers. We welcome people who have family members who are no longer here. And we welcome the indigenous people of this land who have taken care of it for 10,000 years before us. We welcome the artist in you and we welcome whatever mood you are in and whatever feelings that you may have today and always. But it's important that we stay safe, right? So I suppose if you're feeling particularly angry or upset, this might not be the forum for that, right? But you know how to reach me if you need to. Okay, survivors, you are welcome. I am welcome. This cat is welcome because he's off camera. <laughs> And uh, I'd like to show you the materials list one more time. Paper, marker, scissors, tape or glue. Louis looks like he's reading this board. Um, and then there's all kinds of optional things. I invite you to like give yourself a little challenge and maybe get three things out of a kitchen drawer, like nothing sharp, no knives, but like a spoon or just something else that's sitting around. Um, let me show you the kinds of things that I've gathered from my kitchen drawer and see if they draw any inspiration. Okay. I use these all the time. You can probably tell this guy does a lot of stir frying. So I'm going to put tape on these little I want to call them fellas, but I feel like they would be maybe from the same family. 
and they might have things that they need to talk about together. <laughs> I love that I have permission right now to be doing a puppet making workshop with people of all ages because in other times it might seem odd to make things and then have them talk to each other. And today it's like almost the definition of sanity to do things like this, to keep yourself um, from ruminating on all of the negativity. Like you can't turn a page in the newspaper, you can't scroll up or down without being assaulted by some kind of information that could be scary or frightening. Okay, so I gathered some spoons. These are gonna become puppets. I also have a ladle. I feel like this is a really cool cobra, right? Like some fangs. Okay. This thing is just odd. So like, Maybe it's a puppy with his ears and his nose. Or maybe it's... <laughs> this one's kind of indignant. This one's like both hands on hips. All right, this one just might need some legs. You can see it. I know you can, right? <laughs> All right. So that could be... Or I didn't even explore this option, right? I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. A dragon, maybe? Or an eel? Or a crocodile? An alligator? I had a dream about that an alligator last night. And, okay, this one's kind of easy. <laughs> like, hi, I just need eyes and I'm gonna dance for you. It looks just like it would need to have a design kind of like Porky from Toy Story 11. <laughs> um, yeah, Forky. This guy is like maybe brushy or basty. This one, I'm, I'm a little bit struggling with. I don't really see anything. Ooh, ooh. I don't know. I don't know if this is gonna make a good puppet for me. Oh, actually, <laughs> I see a robot. I also see a cat. Louie, you just like are such a big guy. Yeah. He doesn't really like to get picked up. <laughs> All right, so find some fun things in your closet, closet, in your kitchen drawer that are not sharp, that are not breakable, and gather your tape. And I think the best way to start is with eyes. That helps me the most. Um, decide what the body looks like. Oh my gosh, my niece is on here. She's three. Hi, Tegan. That's amazing. Okay. I'm going to move our materials list. We're done with that. And I've got some markers. And I'm kind of overwhelmed with all of these materials that I have sitting here. So I need to clear my work area a little bit. Get my glue ready. Get my scissors. And then these puppet bodies are just gonna go on the side. Okay, we're making a little Louie barricade here. <laughs> So I'm going to make some eyes. I need paper for that. I 
that all I had is newspaper, but I have like some dark stuff and some light stuff. So that's gonna work and I can cut out, there's a little bit of green here that I can cut out. Since I'm working with big paper, I'm just going to cut out some of the colors that I like and then I'm going to work on my eyeballs. So eyeballs are basically just a circle within a circle, but it could be an oval with a smaller circle inside. It could be like a this shape, eyeball shapes. <laughs> <laughs> um, they could be teardrop shaped, they could be heart shaped. I mean, maybe you have something in your house that you're like, oh, this is a perfect thing to use for eyes. I actually have, this is such a cheat and I'm not gonna use it, but I actually have a container <laughs> that says eyes on it and it's filled with eyes. That's cheating which is okay. I mean, cheating isn't okay, but that kind of shortcut is okay in this kind of project. Um, I'm not gonna do it though, because I don't think everyone has the luxury of googly eyes. And to be honest, I've kind of maybe overdone it. <laughs> Where are my googles? I like the way these eyeballs kind of roll forward so he's always looking down. So that's why I mentioned corks, because you can make really cute little guys. Do, 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 do. Who do you think that is? <laughs> yeah. My little Louie puppet. And then this is a poet of a famous actor. <laughs> I'm not going to name the actor. I will let you guess. Um, yeah, I actually sewed that little part right there. You can sew into a cork and that's just yarn. Google eyes. Eyebrows are made out of a shoelace. I made puppets with some really cool art teachers with Des Moines Public Schools on Friday, and I can post some of the pictures of their stuff. I did not want to post it before this workshop because it's intimidating. I forgot that they were art teachers, and I was like, let's make eyes, and they had already been working for hours on their puppets, and they were amazing, like really detailed and um, kind of showed their love for the material that they were using. Some people used paper, some people used fabric. Um, yeah, so I'm getting a little bit sidetracked. We should be making eyeballs right now. paper and some dark paper and I don't think I need a lot of paper for eyeballs and you know what else I did not mention you could use to make a puppet is a paper bag right if you had like a um, a sandwich size paper bag you turn that upside down and it's already got a mouth that you can manipulate so there you go I don't have those I have the big giant bag and I could make a puppet and wear it like that and then it would just be called a mask <laughs> or a costume um, and what we're making today are hand puppets unless you make uh, a stringed puppet today which I don't advise starting out with <laughs> those are called marionettes um, and there's also rod puppets here's an example rod puppets can either be manipulated from above or below by a simple rod He's just sitting on a skewer. Hey guys, how you doing today? That's what I think he sounds like. <laughs> yes, that puppet with the eyebrows is good old Eugene Levy. 
Okay, eyeballs. And I'm just gonna do like a white circle with a black circle in the middle and just kind of go basic and see. Now that would be a weird eyeball. That would be good on like maybe a robot. Yeah, I thought that ice cream scoop might make a good robot, but these eyes are way too big for that ice cream scoop. So this will be my outside piece. And a lot of people think eyes should be the same size as each other. We think symmetry is important to like recreate an art or create an art sometimes. And I don't think so. I really like this expression. Or, right? And that requires like different size eyes. And you can also make your puppet be like, or, I think you might have to be like, <laughs> All right, so here are my two eyeballs. Do not exactly the same. So that's the ball part, and now I want to do the iris. Makes me want to like maybe use some green too, but this isn't an eyeball workshop, right? We have to create some puppets, and I really want to try to make two so they can talk to each other. <laughs> We had an artist mentor on Virtual Connections last week show us how to paint jewels. Oh my gosh, it was such a cool workshop. That's my new obsession. I used to take a line for a walk and now I'm just making jewels and jewels with watercolors. Um, yeah, I'll show this to you another time. I'm also still working on the collage that I started last week. I came up with this idea for a cave of dreams and I've built it a bunch of different ways and I'm still not happy with it. Um, but now it's moved from being a 2D collage to being like a diorama, which is like, I'm trying to build a cave and then put stuff in it and it's a mess. <laughs> Louis likes it though. He likes to get in it. So there's that. All right, now I have to deal with like small amounts of glue. And I, like once you get glue on your fingers, your artwork is gonna look messy, it's just a fact. And I'm not here to judge. Like messy puppets are just as cute as not messy puppets. Um, but I am going to try to keep my mess to a minimum. So I'm gonna use an, like an applicator for my glue. And this is just a broken pen. Oh, I put the glue on the wrong side. <laughs> glue on my hands, glue on my hands, glue everywhere. It's okay, it's okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Eyeball achieved. It's stuck to my hand. So if you see my hands shaking, don't get nervous for me. My hands just sometimes shake, especially when I'm trying to do something small. Okay, two eyeballs achieved. I 
think I'm gonna work on this, these guys. And I shouldn't gender them yet. I think that they will declare who and what they are as they get created. Okay, so I glued my eyes together, but I do not want to glue my eyes onto the spoon. I mean, I'm sure I could soak it off later, but I really probably will be using the spoon for food tonight. So I just want to be able to wash it and use it again. So I'm going to use some tape. <laughs> yes, my wonderful spouse is in the kitchen trying to be super quiet and make his lunch. I wish he was making a puppet right now, but he gave me some really good ideas. Oh my gosh, look how cute it is already. <laughs> I see it. I mean, maybe this one should be a girl. Maybe that doesn't even matter yet. <laughs> well, it's kind of like definitely looking up. I like that. A little bit of confusion too. It looks like one pupil is bigger than the other or retina or whatever it's called. And I am okay with that. Does this puppet need a nose? What would the nose be? I think, actually I'll share, my favorite order is to go eyes, mouth, and then I start to do like clothes and arms and stuff, and then I don't know if it needs a nose. I also collected just some like random things from around the house and like junk drawer things. I have a few uh, like little tchotchke, like, you know, things that I think, here are things that I don't throw away, right? This is the end of a shoelace. I think this is useful. And I save it in my little egg crates where I keep other little objects. Oh yeah, so I was looking for this. This is a little plastic gem, but it could make like a cute nose. It could make like a good beak if I put it long ways. So we'll see. And then I also, I have a couple of lost earrings. So if I make a paper puppet, I think it will wear an earring. Only one earring or two mismatched earrings. And then I cut this out for some reason. That could be a nose, a mouth, an eyeball, a tear. I'm gonna move my egg crate out of the way. Oh, I don't know if I can use tape to get a little fake gem down. I think I'm going to focus on the mouth. And I think I'd like the mouth. Hmm. <laughs> right, it could be a nose. That looks a little bit like, um, is it Grover? Who does that look like? A Muppet, to me, anyway. Or, it could be a mouth. Ah, ah. Er, er. I kind of like it tilting up like that. And then I feel like there just needs to be some sort of, maybe a hat. Okay. So I'm sorry to say that one of my best art skills is making tape circles. <laughs> you make double-sided tape by just taking the sticky tape, the st sticky side out. All right, this is how you can like stick a bow down on the package. And you can make it pretty small. Okay. I think it might be this. <laughs> 
So you do not have to be shy about posting pictures of your po of your puppets because mine <laughs> looks like this. And I'm really proud of it because it's got personality. So hopefully your imagination is just letting you do whatever it is that you think your puppet needs, right? Once you decide that you put eyeballs on it, you just sort of build on whatever else you'd like. I was just thinking how cool it would be if I had a drill and I could just stick an earring right there. <laughs> Again, I'm keeping the spoon. really like this kind of material because it's so rigid. I think that's all I need for hair. Hmm. <laughs> I've got this accidental edge that's got a little bit of a to it. I like that. So I'm going to keep that as the tips of the hair and then cut as thin as I can. I'm going to use that side, obviously. If you have other ways to make hair, do that. Or if you don't want to make hair, you can do a hat. Your puppet doesn't have to have any kind of head covering at all. I just got an idea. Hey, Eric? Yeah? Can you bring me a tissue, please? Tissue delivery. Oh, two tissues. Um, part of a tissue. Ooh, ghost puppet. Ooh. A bit fluffy. <laughs> but I get to tell my favorite joke now. How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. Okay, back to hair making. My mom's here. <laughs> she said she's making too, so she can talk with them. <laughs> oh, any other times, maybe like the height of insanity in an otherwise normal person, but these days, a truly helpful coping mechanism if you can make it work for you. Hair takes a minute. It's okay, I have patience. Oh. I wish I could get a bunch of grandparents on here. I think that'd be fun. I know grandparents are missing their grandbabies so powerfully right now, and their grandbabies miss them too.
and probably extended families that are living together are like driving each other nuts because there's just so much time you have to spend together. <laughs> it's not possible to agree all of that time. Maybe it is. I don't know. So I hope you're making your puppet and you're not, um, I don't know, not making a puppet. <laughs> but if your hands could be free for a second, maybe you could type a little comment on, like, a give, us, give a shout out to someone. Someone or something that you're grateful for. And it could even be someone or something in your house. But just a little shout out to whatever you want. Hi, Kathy. Who do you shout out to? Like, for sure, we're shouting out to our all of our healthcare professionals. I'm shouting out specifically to CNAs because they're the ones, the certified nursing assistants, who can feel like they're on the lowest end of the totem pole and do some of the, I think, most difficult work. It's all difficult work that I admire people for being able to do. So let's try it on. I mean, I think it needs to curl down a little bit. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, bangs. These are so gonna be bangs that get folded over, and I think I have enough. <laughs> cute, cute. Thanks for the tissue, Eric. I mean, then I just turned him into really, you know, a relative of this one, or at least, you know, someone who has the same kind of fashion sense. But I'm gonna work on a oh, little crazy hairs never hurt anybody. <laughs> Maybe we need a bang trim. I'm not loving this so much anymore. I'm gonna put this aside. Figure out what should happen with that. Gotta put the lid on my glue. Well, I cut out some more eyeballs. bigger eyes this time. Yesterday on Artful Connections, Jonathan Fusco did an a la prima painting, which I think it means like for the first time, but it was like, you know, a whole painting, a still life in an hour. <laughs> That was really artful to watch, and this is <laughs> watching Yvette cut out mismatched circles. Thank you for being here. And you better post your pictures of your puppets. I really am so excited to see what other people come up with. 
Oops, that's a weird shape. Hmm. Can I use that? It's a little too small. I'm going to put that aside. Hmm. I'm going to try dark eyes this time. So I'm not seeing a lot of shout outs. Oh yeah. Circles are certainly hard to cut out. Even something circular is hard to achieve. <laughs> and if you have big scissors, I know that you're having a little bit more of a struggle. These eyes look like they might belong to an animal and not a creature. All this stuff junking up my area. These little earrings go back over here. Louie knocked over my magic mirror. So these are the eyes that I think look like animals. I might want to put like a little more, a little black spot inside there. So you just have to build a character. Right? I think it's fun to like talk to it and be like, hmm, what do you need next? This guy is really looking like maybe a raccoon or a, um, I don't know, but he's looking cute to me. So I'm gonna glue these eyes. I might have a bunch of little things sticking around that I can apply glue with. This is a plastic straw I've been using since Oh, but, oh yeah, I'm gluing this to this. I almost glued stuff to my spoon, which I don't want to do. I'm just gluing my second pair of eyes together. And now we get to think a little bit about, like, the backstory of our puppets, like who they are, what their names are, what their personalities are like. Like, let's think of some famous puppets. Um, Big Bird. What do we know about Big Bird? He lived in a nest on Sesame Street. He was a pretty jolly guy. Like, he was really caring, worried about his neighbors, trying to take care of them. I put glue on the wrong side again. Sometimes you just have to realize when you're not being mindful and then just make sure that you don't operate heavy machinery or <laughs> submit an important grant when you're not super centered and present. There, I corrected my mistake. Okay, second pair of eyes is going to be tape circled down. So I really enjoy making stuff with my hands while I'm stuck at home. Um, it gives my 
mind a chance to focus on what my hands are doing instead of what the world is doing. Well, that's weird. I kind of like it. It's a little creepy. Now this guy's, mm, this spatula's personality, uh, he's kind of like, yeah. And I think, I don't know if I have a name yet. Hmm. He told me, it's Herbert. So this is Herbert. Herbert is, was lost for a long time and has just arrived in a place where someone who looks like him can help. I'm gonna put Herbert down and I'm gonna finish making this helper. See now, I just took a little scrap of paper from cutting out circles and I put it down on my puppet. And all of a sudden, call that a happy accident. Glue on your fingers, rarely a happy accident, but like a weird scrap of paper that turns out to have a shape that inspires you, happy accident. the best tape circle I ever made. I need to keep working on that. It has to be so small. So I'm hoping that these kind of distracting activities can bring you some joy. Just a moment of laughter or I don't know, silliness is the word that I was trying not to say, but it's real fun to be silly sometimes. scope for this work. I can't decide if this is a humanoid creature or an animal. I see an owl. should go east. Or maybe he's like more of a masked Avenger type. He might talk like, ha, ha, ha. or I have saved you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the part that we've all been waiting for <laughs> when we get to talk to our spoons. This is Herbert. I will take the first suggestion for this puppet's name. Do we need arms and legs? I really feel like arms and legs are fun. I'm abandoning this hair. I have a little bit of silver paper. So we're going to accessorize to get a little personality in our creatures. Hmm. I'm 
thinking of, I think, I think Herbert needs a bow tie. I think he needs a silver bow tie. So that's what's happening here. Bow tie is just two triangles. Wouldn't it be cool to see the inside of the Jim Henson puppet workshop? Like they must just have like piles of feathers and fur and those character eyes. That would be amazing. flaps off without breaking the middle part. See him. I'm playing music for creativity, but it's kind of like also has a calming effect on me. I like it. Oh, I have to find a way to tape that tiny bow tie on. Patience is all it takes. too high? Is it on his chin and not his neck? <laughs> this guy. Herbert. <laughs> I have some more ideas for Herbert. I think his personality is taking shape. Definitely Herbert is a dude. might be cool if Herbert's hair kind of did this. So that he was kind of like had those, you know, clean up here and then some little tufts right there. I like that look. <laughs> We're gonna work on that. And it's the back of his head. So I'm gonna be like with a tape, not worrying about hiding the tape. Hmm. <laughs> it's too big of a tuft. <laughs> we'll make it a little smaller. It's fun when you go too far and you have to pull it back. I love that part of the creative process. I have some theater friends where we used to um, entertain each other with impossible set designs. Um, and always my favorite was the set made of ice. <laughs> the whole thing, just an ornate ice sculpture chiseled. It would probably about, be about glaciers or something. I want to trim these tufts. I like how long they are, but I think that's what I need to do is, I mean, it could also go straight forward. No, that's weird. <laughs> it could be like antenna. Oh, that 
that's kind of cute. I'm gonna do the sideburns because I really like those. They just have to be short and not look Ready? <laughs> yeah, I think that's about the right length. My voice just got heavy like I was making effort. Oh, that's about the right length. One tuft. Bless you, Louie. talk to it's totally okay <laughs> look at this guy <laughs> hi herbert hi that <laughs> there's a thing called the neutral mask that puppeteers will wear so that their face is like not seen or like stays neutral so that your focus stays on the puppet. But I've always liked the character mask where you get to interact with the puppet. So my face is my mask. <laughs> Herbert says hi. Thanks for all the hearts. Yeet, 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 yeet. The bow tie is really the perfect thing and it's iridescent too. It's like he's real snappy. Now I kind of wish I had some black feathers that I could just put right there, but I don't. I mean, could this puppet be just this serious? Mm, oh, yeah, I don't know. I really do see an owl. Let me see if anybody gave me any suggestions for naming this guy. Oh, Oscar or Harry? Or Woody. It could just be Oscar Harry Woody. I love concatenated names. So Oscar Harry Woody and Herbert. This one's voice is probably deeper. Herbert's just kind of like maybe hyper and confused and maybe trying to sell you something or just hoping to ask, get a question answered or um, trying not to be a bother, but just could you please help me um, figure this out? Well. <laughs> That's called breaking what I just did. You break your character and you start to laugh at yourself and that comes from self-consciousness and actors are encouraged not to do it, especially in film, because then they have to do another take and that costs money. And then in the theater, it just breaks the illusion entirely because you just start laughing and your character clearly is not supposed to be laughing. Um, but when it happens on a sketch comedy show like Saturday Night Live, we love it. <laughs> I'm cleaning up my work surface and fortunately there is not time for an involved puppet show however I do know that I'm going to get some practice in with this mirror and creating some stage directions, cues. Here's my little caption, my cucaracha. And then, <laughs> yeah, that's my name. Yeah, that's my name. So what? Sounds like a girl's name or what? So next week, you're going to take the 
inner child bit a little bit further, if it's possible, beyond making puppets into making a set design. Um, it's going to be miniature and it's going to involve, for me, creatures who are about this size, but I'm going to create an environment um, and I'm going to show you how you can do that too uh, for your puppets to live in or rest in. I really think that these two might just hang out in my utensil bin on the counter <laughs> to make me laugh and I might have to deal with some arguments between the two of them because they're very different personalities. Herbert and Oscar, oh, Woody. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, whether you are here while it was live or you're watching it at a later time. I'm really glad that you're making art to help yourself um, stay up in this really tough time. I'm so grateful for all of my artist friends who inspire me to be brave and do ridiculous things because Nothing is ridiculous in art, and no feeling is ridiculous, and I thank you. I thank you for being a neighbor, and an artist, and a creative person, and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday, and check in with Art Force Iowa at 11.30 Central Standard Time every weekday for some kind of artful activity. Sometimes we make, sometimes we watch, sometimes we listen, um, so check it out. Love to see you there.